assuming creeps behind the figures as sound as cat. Which she cosplayed as the other day, which is why she's so good at it. Am I right? High five, Sumi. She used these shadows to her advantage. I count three of them. And they seem to be headed for the presidential house. I burped a little bit. I'm sorry. She watches as he split up when they reach the presidential house, all moving towards what seems like the predetermined position. Hmm, I need to take them out, but I should keep them alive for questioning. Hey, now I'm thinking like a Jessica. A few weeks ago, I wouldn't have thought twice about killing him. Uh, a few weeks ago? Uh, assume me? I'm still thinking about killing him, alright? And I'm controlling your actions in this game, so we're probably gonna kill him. That's all I'm saying! She allows herself a moment of pride and focuses back on the mission at hand. Okay, looks like the first one has climbed that tree over there! The figure is crushed among the lower branches. The autumn leaves on the trees are still soft and colorful, but the leaves scattered on the ground below are dry and brittle and potentially noisy. Hmm. Hmm. We need to climb the nearest tree and hop across like a proper ninja. As silently as possible, Sumi scales the nearest tree and hides herself among the leaves. Then she springs like a squirrel across to the next tree, like a rabbit squirrel! The soft leaves cushion her jump, ensuring a noiseless travel. She repeats the jump twice more, finally landing on the branches above the hooded figure. She reaches out and... A SWACK! Knocks the figure on the head. Like a ragdoll, he topples from the low branches and lands with a soft thud on the ground. Unconscious. One down! Through the leaves, she peers down and spies the second target lying on the tall ornamental grass that surrounds the presidential house. The long grasses are just barely tall enough to conceal her. This one looks like it might be a girl. Hmm. Run to her hiding spot before she moves. Hmm. We should probably military crawl through the grass. That is probably the proper ninja way to do about do things. Looks like I'm going on a safari! She drops noiselessly to the ground, lies flat on her belly in the tall grass. Then she pulls herself along by her arms, resisting the urge to sneeze as the blades of grass tickle her nose. She sees the target a few yards away. It is, in fact, a girl. Here goes nothing! She rolls the last few yards and clamps the hand over the girl's mouth, stifling the surprised scream. With a deft hand, she plunges a tranquilizer dart. You got fucking darts?! No one told me you had darts! Holy shit! This is straight Bruce Lee shit. Okay, um, Return of the Dragon. Watch that movie. Bruce Lee counteracts people with guns with motherfucking darts. Most badass shit ever, okay? Watch it. It's good. Plus, he fights Chuck Norris in the end. That's all I'm saying. I believe the world ended a little bit that day, okay? There was... There was years lost in the world's lifespan when Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris fought, alright? We lost about 10,000 years in the lifespan of planet Earth. It was that epic, okay? With a deft hand, she plunges a tranquilizer dart into the terrified girl's neck, and the target goes limp. Well, that care takes care of that! One left! Assume he scans the area. Where did the third one get to? Oh, there she is! The third target, larger than the other two, is carefully hidden on the rooftop of the presidential house. Crouched on the balcony, he turned away, peering into the window. Hmm. Well, we can do some blow darts at him, which we now know is an option, apparently. Holy fuck. Or we can climb up the house. Hmm. Now, being that this is the third one, and this is a story-driven game, this one might be the most skilled of the three. So if we shoot a trank at him, he might get wise to it. But if we climb up the house, that just gives him more time to uh, uh, see us coming. Shit. How good are we with darts? I hope we're good, because we're shooting one at his ass. Assuming he loads her dart gun with the tranquilizer, takes aim and fires. The dart hits cleanly and lodges itself into the target's neck. Nice! Nice, Asumi. Ooh! He makes a motion to run, but the dart's effects are immediate. His legs tangle themselves, and he falls into a heap like a sack of rice. Perfect! Now it's time to round these naughty children up! Asumi gathers her unconscious bounties and ties them to a tree. 
She searches their pockets, but comes up empty. Hmm, no identification, huh? The first one she took down is thin and reedy. The girl looks like she has money, with shiny, healthy hair, and perfectly kept nails. It's fucking sin, isn't it? And the third one, well, he's huge and solid, like a rock wall. He's that one sh Japan shack. That's who he is. I'll call you Twig, Princess, and Boulder. Satisfies with her label, she slaps each of them in turn. Rise and shine, sleepy bitches! <laughs> Wait, which one's Twig? Is Twig the girl? Wha what is going on? Oh wait, Princess is the girl. God damn it. Ooh, 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 you. I feel you hungover. Sumi brings out her knife and brandishes it calmly. Now, you're gonna start talking, or I'm gonna start chopping off limbs. You hear me, bitches? Ooh, nothing. It sure didn't seem like nothing. She gently presses the tip of her knife to Princess's throat. Oh! It, it was a prank, oh my god! It's just a harmless prank or a play on the presidential, yeah, oh my god! We, we, we're both from, we're from a rival school, yo. Rival school? She drops the knife for a moment, thinking. Princess seems visibly relaxed. In a flash, Asumi presses the knife to Boulder's cheek. There are no rival samurai schools! Aw, oh, snap! Please don't kill me, please. Next. The next thing out of your mouth better be the truth, or I will chop your face apart, you little bitch! We're not, we're not talking. No? Your knife travels to the edge of Boulder's left eye. Oh my god, you were gonna pluck out his eyeball. That is fucking metal! Aw, oh, Sumi, you cold as ice! Just stop to it, God! Ooh, ooh, let us go! I'm counting to three! One! We don't die that shock! Two! As a Three! We, 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 we were hot, okay? We were Listen to me, sauce or knife? By who? I don't know. They didn't reveal him soon. We were supposed to write a threatening message on the wall of the presidential house. Or on the back of one of the presidential squad unit members. That's what you're really doing, weren't you? Mm-hmm. Son of a bitch. What was the message? They all fall silent, looking at each other. Assume he pokes Twig with a knife. What was the message? Or do you not VALUE YOUR TESTICLES! Duck, Raven! Ka! Raven? Does that mean the presidential unit is under Raven's thumb? After all, or are they trying to uncover Raven as well? What the shit? Questions! Questions are arising, gang. I'm not sure what to make of this. Or is this all a cover for Raven's a true identity? Maybe Raven isn't involved in the presidential unit after all. Or he could be covering it up. I feel like that's thinking way too far into it, though. Yeah, maybe. The questions swirl in Asumi's mind. B b this letting assassin girl baby! Hmm? Now, ooh, now that we've told you truth, are you... you let us go, yes? Fuck these bitches. <laughs> no! I'm a cold-blooded killer, bitch! Her <laughs> dagger flashes and all three are silenced forever. And we gotta achieve the true assassin. <laughs> How dare you give me that option, game? You know what I'm gonna pick! You fucking know at this point! If I've been given the option to kill or not kill, I've killed every time! Okay, if we were given the option to kill Kaori, though, I would be a little hesitant, because I like Kaori, but I also like killing... Mmm. But killing three random assassins that were after my presidential unit? No, fuck that noise. They, they done. They done forever. Raven? What could it mean? 
Is the presidential squad trying to take power from Orochi? Or was this threat meant to be a red herring? I don't know what to think anymore. I feel like if it wasn't red herring, it'd be a very elaborate plot. And if that's the case, then they probably know about you already, Asumi. Which brings up a whole nother le like level of inquiry. God damn it, man. Too much thinking. Suddenly exhausted, she makes her way back to their dorm. He could finally fall into a deep sleep. As Asumi walks back to her dorm, she spies the three presidential squad units, Sen, Keiji, and Hikari, chatting under a tree. I might be tired, but I only have a short time to make my decision and end this. I need to spend some time with one of them, tonight. Ah, oh, shit. Asumi starts to make her way over to them. But which one? Ah, oh, my god. So are we basically picking who the fuck we think Raven is now? Uh, I don't think it's Sen. I don't think Sen is smart enough to do this shit, alright? I think she's just some petty fucking valley girl, man. I don't think she's smart enough to get involved in any of this. Hikari, I'm not sure. I don't know much shit about Hikari. Is it a guy? I don't even know if Hikari's a guy or not. I don't even remember his ass. Keiji, however, top of the list. Let's talk to Keiji. Keiji, how would you like to spend some time together? Girl, why well, you gotta put it like that, okay? He's gonna think you want sex now. <laughs> Keiji glances at Sen. I believe I'm already spoken for this evening. Go ahead, Keiji. Come on, it'll be fun. I, uh, all right. The park is, uh, the park at nine? Sounds great. I'll see you then. She pins and heads back to her dorm room. Filled with confidence, she'll earn this man's trust one way or another. He should be here about now. Already ten minutes late herself, Asumi thought she'd find Keiji already waiting for her. Yet it seems she's the one waiting. If I weren't a train fighter, I'd be a little creeped out all alone out here. I mean, it's pretty dark, and the campus is way off. If someone were to be hiding out there... Ooh! But who would do such a thing? Maybe you, Keiji-san? Oh! Keiji, you jerk! She punches him in the shoulder with an anger, which makes him laugh. Ooh, I forgot how feisty you are! Assume he just grumbles, which makes Keiji laugh again. I, uh, I brought some wine! Assume you are going straight Kunoichi with holy shit! I was, you know, I was joking about the whole Kunoichi thing earlier, but you're going to straight as <laughs> you're going to straight seduce him and assassinate his ass, aren't you? That's what you have in mind. Oh my god, I was joking. You're serious. I thought you didn't drink, which is why it's non-alcohol. Oh, slightly disappointed at that, Sumi. And at that, I'm going to drink my beer. Ah, good stuff. Kiji just shakes his head and takes a large swig from the bottle. Sumi smirks herself. She's a good liar, after all. The wine isn't non-alcoholic. Oh! <laughs> you played me! You're playing him, and you played me, and you playing everybody, okay? I thought I was playing you, but you're playing me, and dude, so many play- So much plays going on! I'll drink to that. Alright. Let's get some info out of this Charlie Brown looking motherfucker then kill his ass. You want some baby? Maybe later! He shrugs and takes another large gulp. I threw the bottle was already gone. God damn, man! You know that sake is high alcohol content. It gets you toe up real fast, man. So, how have you been? We haven't really talked in a while. Things have been great, baby! With the presidential unit, the new principal is. He stops and glances at us soon. Giving us a lot of work to do. That must be stressful. It is, I mean. I get enough pressure as it is without that old bag breathing down my neck. You think I like running around and doing whatever that little princess wants? No, but I do it because it is my duty. And somewhere I have a duty. Man, this stuff is really good. Hmm, the sake. 
Indeed. He takes another large gulp and wipes his mouth with the back of his hand. Assume he tries not to smirk as she attempts to put on her best sympathetic expression. Girl, you playing him like a fucking ocarina if you could play those which we have established earlier that you can't. <laughs> you work so hard. People should appreciate you more. Shit. Assume you buttering up him so hard. Uh, I get all the flack. Well, that spoiled little girl gets the glory at the end of the day. It is not fair, I tell you why I, I want. He takes another large, he makes another large gesture with the bottle, which is now mostly empty. Assumably gently takes the bottle and sets it down. But you, you appreciate me, baby, don't you? I see how you look at my bulge. <laughs> He strokes her cheek. His charming smile is almost dazzling, but assume he can see right through it. Mm. Should we call him out? Fuck him, let's call him out. You are not interested in me, KG. Why do you try to charm me so much? Oh, kid, that is my job. Don't take it too personal. Really? Holy shit, did we just fucking nail this shit? His job? Does that mean he was supposed to size her up? Does someone suspect who she really is? Oh fuck, the plot thickens. Assuming suddenly feels ill. Listen, KG, I am not feeling well. I'm going back to my room, okay? We need more information out of this motherfucker. He didn't give a shit! Come on, he's drunk! We need to take advantage of him! Now, that sounds like something the boys should be saying, not the girls. What the fuck? Can I come? Just taking a, just taking a moment to uh, absorb that line there. Oh my god, uh, Asumi. He raises an eyebrow suggestively, which disgusts Asumi. Oh, Asumi's not feeling it. I think it would be a good idea if you slept this off on your own. She stands and leaves him sitting there dumbfounded. She crosses the park alone as she's filled with thoughts. Clearly, Keiji is highly suspicious. Maybe even her number one priority. Looks like she's uncovered something after all. Indeed, indeed. This Keiji is highly suspicious. You know, you know what, gang? Normally, I would think this is a good stop, or <laughs> a good time to stop the recording. But god damn it, I'm fucking feeling this story. I have many beers, and we're gonna keep going, alright? I'm going to fucking find out what is going on! I don't care if it's 3 in the fucking morning. My neighbors can fuck off. Okay, I'm going to yell very loudly while recording fucking video games for the YouTubes, okay? Because I want to find out what is going on in this fucking Asumi adventure, god damn it. Also... Might want to get in Kaori's drawers. I don't know. If we get the opportunity, probably want to do that. Because she's hilarious, okay? She's... Oh my god, what if she was Raven? Oh my god, that would just... That would tear my world apart. I couldn't take. <laughs> We'd have to go rebel. <laughs> We'd have to defect from the Black Clan. We'd have to just go rebel with Raven. Oh my god. <laughs> she's, she's that convincing. Anyway, let us continue our tale. This is the last day of the induction period. Whatever happens at the end of this weekend, I probably won't be around anymore. Kami mentioned I would have to leave before the induction ends. I have seen a lot of things, but ultimately, I need something so I can end this. Classes aren't important. It's time to visit Mr. Konishi's house. Perhaps I can get to the bottom of this. I need to find out what he does. His information could be vital to finding Raven. I'll snap his Kaori. Sumi, who are you talking to? Oh, oh, my cousin on the phone. Just say you're talking to yourself. What's, why do you have to be so evasive with Kaori? What the fuck? I'm gonna drink. Ah, good stuff. Shh. Oh, oh, tell her I say hi. Anyway, let's go to the pool party going on this afternoon. It might be our last chance since the weather's been so cold. Oh, well, actually, I have plans today. Good thing it's the afternoon, then. I won't have... I won't take no for an answer. All right, later it is, then. Good, see you later, then. 
Let's see me paces back and forth, going over the plan in her head. Okay, I knock on the door, I pretend I'm writing a tribute to Mr. Konishi, the guy who I murdered in cold blood. If I act sympathetic enough, maybe his wife will let me look into his belongings. Fuck, dude. Drinking beer makes me burp. Makes me very drunk. I'm gonna grab another beer. Oh my god, I went through half of this fucking box already. God damn. <laughs> right, I better get going before it's too late. Sumi feels genuinely nervous as she raises a hand to knock on the door. Why? She's killed and infiltrated houses plenty of times. Why is this simple task so different? Hello! Oh, you're not one of his guys, are ya? The woman sniffs and casts her eyes to the floor. No, ma'am. I'm writing a tribute to your husband, and I was wondering if I could come inside. I I don't think it's a good idea. I'm not supposed to talk about anything related to the uh, instant, you know. She looks so exhausted and hollow. Like she's lost the love of her life. Which she kind of did, Asumi. I like how I'm blaming Asumi for this after I made the decision to kill him. <laughs> I should be the one feeling bad, but I don't. Ha! <laughs> Use a kill, Asumi. Alright, keep on killing, girl. Why aren't you supposed to talk about it? Uh, I, I've been forbidden, is all. By who? I don't know. The same person who did all the horrible things to my poor Nubuo. Wait, who the fuck is Nubuo? We can't reveal the truth, this bitch. Oh my god, no. We have no. We have way too many secrets to be revealing to her, so we'll just show sympathy. That poor man. What did they do to him, Miss Konishi? I, I'm sure you've heard about the uh, unsavory things my husband did with some of them goyles. She takes a shaky breath and continues. I knew about it, of course, but my duty was to my husband, so I kept silent. But someone, a student, found out and had pictures to prove it. They had pictures? The woman nods and runs a shaking hand through her hair. Soon he feels a pang of guilt over what she's done to this poor woman. Really? 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 <laughs> Asumi, come on. What kind of assassin has a conscience? Come on, Asumi, use a killer! Come on! <laughs> Whoever this student was, blackmail, do ba threatened to publish the pictures if he didn't cooperate. <laughs> so he did whatever the place said. He never actually met his blackmailer, you know. They communicated via a carrier pigeon. And the student had unlimited access to all school records. Nubo also had to allow the slow infiltration of the horrible group into the school. Am I getting the feeling this is the presidential unit? Oh, snap. Oh, my God, dude. Oh, my God. You're going to tell me the whole presidential unit? The squad, which was going to launch our rap career, is actually the motherfuckers we just got to kill? If so, meh. I don't feel that bad about it. <laughs> you mean... Orochi? Miss Konichi shudders, wrapping her arms around herself. Or was it Orochi? I'm still not clear on what Orochi is, but whatever. <laughs> it was neither that or... It was... It'll uh, be ruined, I... Though I guess in the end it didn't matter after all, because some random Konichi murdered his ass. It was... Uh, oh, my God. Her eyes filled with tears. She presses her hand to her throat. Through her mouth, stifling a sob. Oh, I'm sorry I had to bring these memories up for you, Mrs. Konishi. Oh, I've already said too much if they found out. I'm sorry, but you have to go. Uh -huh. But wait, I want to look at these nudie pics. Goodbye. The door slams in Asumi's face. She can hear the muffled sob on the other side. She s turns slowly and crosses the lawn, deep in thought. So Raven is a student. At least that is confirmed now. And it definitely seems like it's a presidential squad member, I think. Hmm. How else would they have the influence to get those photos? To have that kind of sway over the principal or on a student to be with him while being recorded? 
And if they could control Mr. Konichi that fully, will they attempt the same as Miss Nagai? I'd better keep an eye on her from here on out. Also, I'm reserving her to make sure she's safe. This is all going to come to a head soon. I can feel it! And now we're at the pool. <laughs> See? I, aren't you glad I dragged your moby butt on out here, you moby butt motherfucker? Let's cosplay! It's pretty refreshing. <laughs> Ooh, yeah! Mm. Ooh, it looks like a couple of fine-ass water nymphs. What up, lady faces? My name's Ode. It rhymes with Chode and Commode. Also, Toad. Oh, yeah. Which is my influence to my... Uh, <laughs> my style. Toad from the X-Men. I wish I had a face cam right now because I'm semi-dancing. This idea of being chode right now. I'm fucking drunk as shit, guys. <laughs> I should not be recording right now. Whatever. Ode, you're a motherfucker, but you're you're funny as shit. I'll give you that much. Oh, not you again! Get lost before I chop your goddamn testicles off, you heathen bitch! Yeah, <laughs> I was just leaving. Mm, I'm gonna find some sexy water nymphs in the ladies' bathroom. Oh, yeah. Mmm, cause my name is Chode, and I rolls to the commode. Get some Toad action going on with my Chode. Oh, I'm a poet, and I don't know it. I'm gonna keep rhyming. Two girls like me, you like me at okay, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea, buddy. I'll get us some drinks, okay? As Kara crosses the deck, Simi sees Keiji whispering to a group of first years. His dazzling smile has been cranked to full wattage. And as Sumi can tell, his charm is working its magic. Oh shit, I clicked the wrong button. Uh, return, please. I'm sorry. As Kara. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We saw that already. What are they talking about? Simi tries to edge closer to the conversation, but a giggle of giggling bikini clad girls is. Getting between her and her target. Defeated, she sighs. You need a bikini, Asumi. That's what you need. Wait, why are you trying to roll the KG with this one piece? Shit. You know how the dudes will play you? St I still want to kill his ass, though. I he beat us in jujitsu class that one time, and I'm still salty about that. We really should drown his ass. Like, 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 grab him by the scruff of his neck, just force his head straight down to the pool, and then just, like, hum a nice little ditty as we wait for him to drown to death. Okay? Probably something along the lines of Zelda's lullaby, huh? You learned that in music class earlier. You like that idea? I like that idea. Let's do that. In addition, Kaori sees Hikari, Utsuro, Minako, each milling about in a different location. What if Minako was Raven? Oh, my fucking god, that would fuck my world up! No, it couldn't be Minigo. No, 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 no. Why, why are we approaching these people? I don't... I don't think it's Suro. Or do I? No, let's not approach Minigo, because that's awkward. Hikari? I still don't know who Hikari is. Uh, let's just wait for Kaori, alright? Kaori shouldn't be long now. Kaori waves Asumi over to her. She's holding two drinks. Why are some people starting to leave? Not sure. Maybe just because it is starting to get dark. You weren't too bored while I was gone, were you? I was actually waiting for your return, baby. I'm glad we could do this together. Though it does seem like we have arrived too late, as most are starting to leave already. I had noticed that also. But there's no reason we have to leave. I, for one, would like to swim, shall we? Let's join Corey for a swim. Kaori raises an eyebrow and grins. Let's go! The two dive into the pool together, laughing. Aw, best friends! They occasionally make out. Right? Right? I'm, I'm, oh, maybe. I'm gonna drink the remainder of my drink and open a new one. Oh, shit the fuck, yes. Blue Moon, why have you not endorsed my fucking YouTube channel yet? Because I drink your beer so much! And I talk about how awesome it is. 
Come on, just let me do a commercial for you or something. Blue Moon! Only for a can, though. Okay, I won't endorse your bottled beer. I will endorse your canned beer, though. I will totally do that, and I will do it for minimal dollars. I, I require some dollars, okay? I can't use my likeness for no dollars. Come on! I'm a, a non-existent YouTube celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> I am barely relevant. No, not even that. <laughs> On the internet. <laughs> Whatever, let's continue our tale. It seems like I should be more tired, but I guess really not much has happened. At least the lessons are over now, but I have a feeling this weekend will be the end. It is time to make a decision. Hmm. With all the things I've heard about Mr. Guy, and the things that went on with Mr. Kanishi and Orochi, I should really keep an eye on Mr. Guy. Maybe I should check up on her tonight. I have a feeling she works even later than Mr. Kanishi did. Maybe I'll find her in her office. And we don our cloak. Our killing cloak. Which means somebody gon' die. With new conviction and a burst of energy, Sumi dons her cloak and begins to trek to the main office. Was I mistaken about her work ethic? As Sumi quietly opens the door and slips into the office, she stops short. Wha what's all this? A bookshelf is knocked over, its contents strewn over the floor. The principal's chair lies on the side next to the desk, which has not been knocked askew. Asumi opens the desk drawer to find it completely empty. What the shit? Somebody's hit her already! We're too late! All the records are gone! And it looks like there was a struggle here. Oh! She bends and picks up a single shoe. It's a woman's shoe. It must be hers. She's in trouble. I have to find out where they took her. Uh, uh, uh... Well, the floor isn't going anywhere. Let's look out the window. So dark, I can't see a thing! No trace of fear at all! Maybe I should look for clues elsewhere! Sumi so drops to her hands and knees and searches the floor. I don't see anything useful! Hey, what's this? A single, muddy streak stains the floor tile. Mud? Mud? The park! She leaps up and races off. It was motherfucking cagey, wasn't it? How am I ever going to find where she went? Okay, come on, Sumi, you can do this! I'll just have to check the most likely places. Uh, what, what, what are the most? Well, the restroom is where a lot of shady shit happens, but usually of the sexual variety. So we might have to rule that out. There's a boathouse. I'm not too sure on how boathouses work, but that's usually where gangster shit happens. I think under the bridge. That's where hobos sh hang out. Let's check to the boathouse. Sumi makes a mad dash for the boathouse and tries the door. It's locked! I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but I have to get in there. I have to get this door open. Well, how? Uh, can we... Do we have a lock-picking skill? I certainly hope so. Sumi takes a deep breath and removes a bobby pin from her hair. She carefully inserts it into the lock. I've done this hundreds of times as an assassin. It just takes time and steady hands. Come on... Almost there! Yes! Got it! The lock clicks open. Sumi wrenches the door open and steps inside. Scuffle, scuffle. Oh, who are you? Everyone, run! My, my, this looks unpleasant. Did we just fucking call it? Oh my fucking god! We just fucking nailed this shit! With the boathouse? Holla at your boy. <laughs> Holla at your boy, Grim Booze! Yeah! Have you come to threaten me as well, you batch? Quite the opposite. She takes her blade and slices through the restraints. Mr. Guy stands and rubs her wrist, a black eye is forming on her face. Did they rough you up much? Not as much as you think. I believe they were trying to scare me more than anything. Why? I haven't been very cooperative with the agreements that our former principal had with subgroups. Orochi? The students evidently did like that. Students? There are more? Two others. The leaders, I think, left before you arrived. Do you know who these people are? 
Mr. Guy nudges the body with her toe. I know they're students. This is the first year, I think. The other two, I'm not sure. They like you remain cloaked. Well, let's uncloak their asses. Do you know who that person might be? Someone in the presidential unit, no doubt. But no, I don't know who specifically. Do you remember anything about the other two? Only that the leader was a bad. He gave a single order before they left. I intend to find out who they are. I wonder, could you escort me back to my house? I don't feel particularly safe on my own tonight. Of course. She takes Mr. Guy by the arm and leads her over the body and outside. Can we identify the body? God damn it. This would be pertinent information for us to know. What kind of fucking detective are you assuming? That's right. Use a killer. You're not a detective. That would be a very useful trait at this point, is all I'm saying, god damn it. Whatever. Happy to have gotten there in time to save the one person who she now knows is on her side. Everything seems to keep coming back to the presidential unit. Tomorrow it is. I must make a decision and follow it through, whatever the consequences. Alone in a room, Asumi clutches her dagger and paces from the window to the door and back again. As expected, after yesterday and Mr. Guy, I got a message from Kami. The council thinks the bombing will happen this week. I'm out of time. I need to make a decision right here and now. Today, I'm going to find Raven and Orochi members that kill them. But I still don't know who. I do know he's a member of the presidential unit, and maybe a man, though. But is it just Raven, or is there a whole group of rebels in the school? Sounds like a whole group. That's all I'm saying. Is the whole presidential unit composed of rebels? Are the prefects in and on it too? Could, could someone I care for be in one of them? Just using me as a pawn for Roji? There's no way to know for sure, but the only way to stop the bombings for sure is to confront and kill Raven. But first, I should talk to someone important to me. Uh, wait, we're talking to someone important? Or are we calling someone out right now? We need to talk to someone that we can trust. I, th I think we can trust Kaori. I like Kaori. I think we can trust her. Can we lay down the shit that's been going on to her? Maybe she can give us an insight, and then we can make our decision? But if this is the choice to call out whoever is fucking involved in the murders, we're straight up calling out Raven, then that's a problem. I, I hope the former option is the correct one, because I want to talk to Kaori about this. I think I love Kaori. I don't know how she feels, but I need to tell her. Okay, I think we're good. Before it's too late. With a quick nod to herself, she races out the door. Kaori is at her desk, all her concentration focused on the paper she's writing, with shaking hands. Asumi takes a deep breath and knocks on the door frame. Hey, Kaori. Kaori looks up and grins, which is somehow makes Asumi even more nervous. Why don't you feel nervous around Kaori? Kaori is so cool. I love Kaori. Sui, what's up? Well, there's, there's something I need to tell you, just in case, in case something happens. Kaori's smile disappears a little, replaced by a frown. Ah, uh, that doesn't sound very good. What's wrong? I'm not who you think I am. I'm, I'm, I'm a motherfucking killer, bitch. Well, I was, I still am, I kill people all the time, but, but, I'm feeling guilt. I was sent here by the Jessicars to find a rebel named Raven. Carrie's eyes widen. She glances at the doorway, realizing she's blocking the exit. Assuming he steps away from the doorway to ease her fears a little. Carrie, we ain't here to kill you. Unless you Raven, then we're totally going to kill you. Maybe. Or join your group. God damn it. If you are fucking Raven, I will be so pissed. And I will join your squad. I don't give a fuck. Cause I like you, Kaori. You're fun. You have a good sense of humor. And I don't want you to be the person I have to kill. 
normally you everyone would never know but 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 I love you whoa whoa shut the fuck up whoa whoa standing up whoa whoa hands in the air standing up out of the chair like I just don't care Asumi you just dropped the yellow bomb I said, goddamn, girl. That's it. Uh, damn. Damn. Laying them all on the table, huh? Laying down all the... All in! <laughs> We're all in, baby! Alright. Let's find out what's happening. I never felt like this before. For anyone, I've never had family. Not really, anyway. But I want you... I want you to be in my family. I have to confront Raven now. But I couldn't go without telling you how I feel and hoping you feel as I do. Oh, Sumi! You really are quite stupid! Of course I feel the same way, and I don't care what you have been! I love you, and we will always be family! Oh my god, are they gonna make out now? Hot! The two embrace and a kiss? I fucking knew it! Ah! <laughs> Dude, oh my god, I love it. <laughs> I'm so into this game right now. <laughs> Okay, let me break it down for you guys. When I first picked out this game, I was just like, "Oh, this is just this is just another one of them cheese ass fucking fucking visual novels, man." But I am so emotionally invested in this fucking game right now. You don't even know. Oh my god, you don't even know. Okay, maybe it's because I'm really fucking drunk. <laughs> I've been really fucking drunk the entire time I've been playing this game. Whatever. I'm fucking passionate about this game. I'm so happy for you two. Oh my god! <laughs> and they making out. Soup's hard. That is your thumbnail, Grim. Cong no, you can't use that as a thumbnail. God damn it, that's giving way too much. Okay, fine, 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 fine. Whatever. Good luck, Asumi. I will wait for you to return. Now it's time to kill that bitch ass. This is it. All this time and effort, and now's my one shot to make it all count. And to do that, I need to kill KG. <laughs> like there was any fucking doubt, you knew I was gonna kill his ass. She finds KG in the park, of all places, reclining under a tree with his eyes closed. Asumi takes a deep breath and approaches him, and he opens his eyes and raises an eyebrow. I just burp throughout that entire sentence. My bad. What do you want, baby? I know who you are, and I'm here to destroy you! I see. Well, someone was bound to figure it out sooner or later. Oh my fucking god, did we just fucking call this shit? I knew it was the Charlie Brown looking motherfucker, but now we gotta face him in combat! And he beat us last time, which means we gotta step up our game, girl! Oh my god, let's do this! Very well then! We'll fight like true warriors! He slowly stands and draws a dagger. You think you can destroy me? Go ahead and try, baby! Kill his ass. Assume he dives, then faints to the left. Keiji tries to keep up, but Assume he manages to cut a deep gash into his shoulder, dropping him to his knees. I'm a trained assassin of the Black Can, bitch! You really think you had a chance? But I have seen you fight. I am more than your equal. Come on now, KG. I had to play the part of a student, and enemies are everywhere. What fool shows their true strength in those conditions? Shit. KG, you just got played like a motherfucking ocarina, son! Yeah! Mmm, KG! You done, son. Assume me. Straight up professional killer! Oi! Uh. Hush now! Go with honor! Ugh! Son, I. I failed you! Me! Wait, what? What the shit? Was a fucking Sen? He just mentioned Sen! Back! Was it fucking Sen? I didn't even think it was Sen! I should have thought it was Sen! God damn it, it was Sen! You do not go anywhere near Kaori, you 
Motherfucker, we need to kill Sen now. We need to kill everybody! Carefully, with the skill of her years and training, Sumi slides her knife into Keiji's throat, silencing him forever. Then he's gone, his blood covering the grass beneath him. Sen? Of course, Keiji was only her muscle. God damn it! I should have fucking known it was Sen. God fucking damn it! Raven isn't Keiji's identity, it's Sen's! Aw, you fucking bitch. Sumi bursts into the house, where Sen is lounging on the sofa reading a book. Her head snaps up in alarm. Uh, somehow, what's got on, Bab? I've come for you, Raven! Rabbi? What do you mean? Don't play stupid! I'm gonna murder your ass! Then you should also know I always have protection. KJ disposal. <laughs> you been out playing, girl? KJ already dead. KJ? Not this time! I murdered his ass in cold blood! Nah. No, no way! Sumi draws her knife and Sen leaves from the couch into a right into a fighting stance. Fine, not Kaya, my sob. Sen lunges forward. Sumi has only a moment to think. Uh, kill her ass? Like there's any doubt about that? Hey, ya, bitch! Sumi plunges her knife into the older girl's belly, stopping her in her tracks. With a sputter, Sen drops to her knees. No, 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 stops her bitch! Sumi raises her knife again. No, no way! She brings the knife down and sounds his raven forever. Fuck! I should have known it was Sen the whole time, but we were soups close with KG. I'm glad we picked K. Was Sen even an option in that choice earlier? I'm not sure. Anyway, I, th I feel like we did things right. I did it! Raven is gone! And I was safe! Suddenly exhausted, she drops the knife and sinks to the floor. Her vision swims and she closes her eyes for just a moment. What happens now? Sumi learns the truth. Love can help a person do more than survive. She takes her place with a, as a Jessicar with Kaori by her side. Oh, they so love! Oh, <laughs> I love it! Kaori's great! With the leaders, Sen and Keiji dead, the Orochi Rebellion falls apart before it can do any more damage. Oh my, did we just fucking murder the shit out of this game in one try? Or is it just like not that hard? Or are we just really good? I don't know. I might have to like replay this game and try shitty options just to see if I fuck up. But god, I feel like we just killed the fucking shit out of this game. <laughs> That's what I feel like right now. I don't know. Anyway. Hailed as a hero by those in power. Sumi, wait, when we get complete the game? Oh yeah, neat. Hailed as a hero by those in power. Sumi is indicted, inducted as a full warrior of the Jessicars, the first assassin to be so honored. And we killed everybody. True love number four. Oh, there's different love options. You know what? You know what, guys? You know what? I realized that, like, like a lot less plays of games of this nature usually go through. Like, all the different options that can happen in the game to find out the different endings. But you know what? We don't do that shit on the Grim Bruce channel, alright? This is canon. This is how we can roll with. We killed the bad guys. We got the hilarious, awesome girl in the end. And that is fan-fucking-tastic, alright? I'm soups happy with this ending, alright? We're gonna leave it on that, alright? Asumi, so happy for you. You too, Kaori. Oh my god. This this game ended up being a lot more awesome than I thought it would be. Oh my god. Loving it. Ah! Now we got the, the final screen. Ah. Fantastic. Okay, yeah. I, I genuinely... I genuinely like this game. You know, I think I mentioned this before, but... Uh, usually, before I get a game for Grim Bruce Gaming... Uh, first of all, I decide if it's worth the shit. And that's generally a difficult process. And I base that on a decision if it's uh, uh, on sale or not. This one happened to be on sale. And I read the comments. And a lot of the comments were negative. But I read down quite a bit. And a lot of them were positive. 
after that. And that just struck me as like one of those games where people are like on the fence about it. And that that is the shit Grim looks for, alright. Is where where it divides people, you know? Like half and half. Okay, if it's all negative then fuck it. If it's all positive then fuck it. But if it's half and half, that's my jam right there. <laughs> and this was the game that really struck me as that. It ended up being pretty I liked it. I dug this game quite a bit, man. We gotta kill people. There was tons of decisions. As far as visual novels go, this is probably one of the best, if not the best, I've played yet. Honestly. It's because, like, it, normally you don't feel like you have any say in any of the decisions. Now, I don't really know what sort of impact these decisions had in the game. I'm not quite clear on that, because I've only played it once. But as far as other novels, visual novels go, it doesn't feel like you have much say in the matter. You don't get very many decisions at all. Even if the decisions don't make much of a difference, we had enough of the decisions to make me feel like it did make a difference. Is what I'm saying. So, thumbs up to this game. Fuck yeah, I had a good time. And the fucking intro music is awesome! I cannot stress that enough. Anyway, hey, thanks for watching, guys. I don't know if we're going to be doing another thing, another one of these, but I'm kind of feeling these games. I'm... If you have any suggestions for another one of these type of games to do, I'm kind of feeling this genre, I won't lie. It's kind of fun. So, uh, anyway, I'll see you in the next one.